So I'm Paul Kauke, I'm a consultant ophthalmologist working in Glasgow. I work at the Gart Naval General Hospital, I work at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital. I was clinical director in Glasgow for five years. My main special areas are ocular plastics and orbital disease, uh, but I also specialised in intraocular and extraocular tumours, and I help run the, the National Centre for uh, Ocular Tumours in Scotland, uh, based in Glasgow. So I was clinical director for ophthalmology for five years, uh, which obviously included the COVID pandemic, which was uh, a very interesting time for all of us. Um, clinical director for Glasgow covers uh, a very wide area, uh, seven major sites across the city, 37 consultants, large number of uh, optometrists, orthoptists, and lots of other staff, uh, and a very big training programme as well with 30-odd junior and senior trainees in ophthalmology. Optometrists uh, were obviously very important. Um, we were involved in Eye Health Scotland, which is a group that involves all the lead clinicians across Scotland and all the main groups, so optometry, orthoptics, nursing, Royal RNIB representation, patient representation, management, uh, and all these groups were brought together to try and share good practice and also try and tackle the main challenges that ophthalmology faces uh, in the modern world. Um, and that certainly is not an easy, easy task. With community optometry, um, we're trying to have a meeting of minds because we both uh, are involved in eye health uh, in the community and in hospital. And there's a lot of overlap, especially with chronic conditions, glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, cataracts. These are the main um, areas that we need to be working on in the future uh, to give the best uh, experience for our patients. And often, um, getting your care closer to home is always better than having to come to hospital, uh, both for the patient but also for the system uh, and financing uh, that service. So I think there's a lot that we um, agree on, there's a lot we can work on together, but as ever, lots and lots of challenges to try and bring that about. We're very lucky in Scotland in that we have uh, a government that has funded, has agreed to fund uh, a, a national system of electronic working in ophthalmology. And we're fortunate because that's not, not the case for a lot of other specialties. I think in eye health, we're in a very privileged position because we are able to image the eye in, in, in many different ways. And then we can use the information we get from imaging to share information and to provide healthcare. Uh, and potentially in the future, artificial intelligence will play a role as well in that sharing of data. So we have the funding, we have a government that is prepared to listen to us and to go with us on this journey. Uh, and what that means is that we can coordinate uh, the type of system we want to produce for the whole country. At the end of June, we went live with a glaucoma clinic here in uh, Glasgow, at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary. It was headed up by my uh, consultant colleague. So we're very excited about that. And these electronic records will focus on the three main groups, which are cataract, glaucoma, and age-related macular degeneration. However, a lot of the other subspecialties will be able to use these platforms. For example, cornea will be able to use the cataract platform and so on. We are focusing on integrating this record in hospital first, because we have to get the hospitals integrated first of all, and then we'll be looking to go out into the community. So um, we know, for example, for glaucoma, we have uh, glaucoma projects in the community that can then be linked in to the patient record. And that's being looked into at the moment. The COVID pandemic um, was a big shock to all of us and we had to make very, very quick decisions. Uh, sometimes twice or three times a day we were meeting so regularly over that time because none of us really had faced a situation like it before. Um, the interaction for me with community optometry was absolutely critical. Um, there was about a week where we were not getting any advice from anywhere and we had to really start making our own decisions. Um, before we started to get the official advice from, for example, the Royal College of, of Ophthalmology and Royal College of Optometry, from government and so on. Quite 
Early on, there was this concept of emergency eye treatment centres that, that, that arose. And, and every part of Scotland had their own ideas about what we should be doing and how many of these centres we required and so on, and where they would be. Interestingly, Glasgow and Edinburgh had a very different concept to places like Aberdeen, for example, or Fife or Forth Valley. Um, we felt that we had big enough acute centres within our hospitals that could be run by our internal optometrists and ophthalmologists in conjunction with the community. That meant the patient should only go for one face-to-face -face contact, which was in the hospital setting. That was the way we saw it in Glasgow, and I think they, they saw it a similar way in Edinburgh as well. Um, but in other parts of the country, like Aberdeen, for example, they had several emergency eye treatment centres in the community. Uh, and obviously some of the more remote areas as well, that made sense, rather than the patient having to travel long distances. What we did do, however, in Glasgow is we set up a very, very stringent telephone triage system that was in conjunction with uh, the ophthalmologists in the hospital as well. I spoke a little bit about artificial intelligence. I think that's going to become a very, very big player in the future. There are already quite well-known algorithms, for example, for glaucoma care, where um, a patient who has a certain data set, whether it's an OCT of the optic disc, a visual field, a pressure, and so on, um, certain algorithms can tell you with quite a high degree of certainty whether a patient is low risk, medium risk, or high risk. And I think these sort of algorithms are going to become incredibly important in the future. Um, how we are going to make use of them is going to be very interesting. It should probably be in the community because, um, again, I don't think it's a good idea for patients to travel long distances and to use up uh, resources in secondary care uh, to, uh, to try and decide whether someone's low, medium or, or high risk. It sounds a little bit futuristic, but I think it's coming. I think it has to come because I don't see any other way of us coping with an ever-aging population, uh, with um, uh, a lot of disease that, that is preventable. So I think we are in a particular, particularly privileged position in ophthalmology and optometry in that we have uh, an organ that we can image and we can image to a high degree of accuracy. And I think that'll only get better. So to me, it's how you use the data from those images to decide whether a patient is of greater risk of losing their vision or not. That's my prediction.